The Great Plague of London, lasting from 1665 to 1666, was the last major epidemic of the bubonic plague to occur in England. It happened within the centuries-long second pandemic, a period of intermittent bubonic plague epidemics that originated in Central Asia in 1331, the first year of the Black Death, and included related diseases such as pneumonic plague and septus mike plague, which lasted until 1750. The Great Plague killed an estimated 100,000 people, almost a quarter of London's population, in 18 months. The plague was caused by the Yersinia pestis bacterium, which is usually transmitted to a human by the bite of a flea or louse. The 1665-66 epidemic was on a much smaller scale than the earlier Black Death pandemic. It became known afterward as the Great Plague mainly because it was the last widespread outbreak of bubonic plague in England during the 400-year second pandemic. The plague was endemic in 17th century London, as it was in other European cities at the time. The disease periodically erupted into massive epidemics. There were 30,000 deaths due to the plague in 1603, 35,000 in 1625, 10,000 in 1636, and smaller numbers in other years. At that time, bubonic plague was a much feared disease, but its cause was not understood. Many mistakenly blamed emanations from the earth, pestilential effluvia, unusual weather, sickness in livestock, abnormal behavior of animals, or an increase in the numbers of moles, frogs, mice, or flies. It was not until 1894 that its causal agent, the bacterium Yersinia pestis, was identified by Alexandra Yersin, and its transmission by rat fleas became known. Although the Great Plague in London was long assumed to be a bubonic plague, caused by Yersinia pestis, this was only confirmed in 2016. It is now believed that human body lice also played a key role in causing infections, perhaps more so than rats. The plague was one of the hazards of life in Britain from its dramatic appearance in 1348 with the Black Death. The bills of mortality began to be published regularly in 1603, in which year 33,347 deaths were recorded from plague. Between then and 1665, only four years had no recorded cases. In 1563, a thousand people were reportedly dying in London each week. In 1593, there were 15,003 deaths, in 1625 saw 41,313 deaths, and between 1640 and 1646 came 11,000 deaths, culminating in 3,597 in 1647. The 1625 outbreak was recorded at the time as the Great Plague, until deaths from the plague of 1665 surpassed it. These official figures are likely to under-report actual numbers. This outbreak of bubonic plague in England is thought to have spread from the Netherlands, where the disease had been occurring intermittently since 1599. It is unclear exactly where the disease first struck, but the initial contagion may have arrived with Dutch trading ships carrying bales of cotton from Amsterdam, which was ravaged by the disease in 1663-64, with a mortality given of 50,000. The first areas to be struck are believed to be the dock areas just outside London, and the parish of St. Giles. In both of these localities, poor workers were crowded into ill-kept structures. Two suspicious deaths were recorded in St. Giles Parish in 1664 and another in February 1665. These did not appear as plague deaths on the bills of mortality, so no control measures were taken by the authorities. But the total number of people dying in London during the first four months of 1665 showed a marked increase. By the end of April, only four plague deaths had been recorded, two in the parish of St. Giles, but total deaths per week had risen from around 290 to 398. The onset of the disease was recalled two years later by Puritan minister Thomas Vincent. It was in the month of May that the plague was first taken notice of. Our bill of mortality did let us know but of three which died of the disease in the whole year before. But in the beginning of May the bill tells us of nine. Fear quickly begins to creep upon people's hearts. Great thoughts and discourse there is in town about the plague and they cast in their minds whether they should go if the plague should increase. Yet when the next week's bill signifieth to them the disease from nine to three their minds are something appeased, discourse of that subject cools. Fears are hushed, and hopes take place, that the black cloud did but threaten, and give a few drops, but the wind would drive it away. But when in the next bill the number of the dead by the plague is mounted from three to fourteen, and in the next to seventeen, and in the next to forty-three, and the disease begins so much to increase and disperse. Now secure sinners begin to be startled, 
and those who would have slept at quiet still in their nests, are unwillingly awakened. The outbreak was concentrated in London, but it affected other areas as well. Perhaps the best known example occurred in the village of Eme in Derbyshire. The plague allegedly arrived with a merchant carrying a parcel of cloth sent from London. The villagers imposed a quarantine on themselves to stop the further spread of the disease. This prevented the disease from moving into surrounding areas, but around 33% of the village's inhabitants died over a period of 14 months. Other places hit hard included Derby and Norwich. In Bristol, strenuous efforts by the city council seem to have limited the death rate to C.0. 6% during an outbreak lasting from April to September 1666. By late autumn, the death toll in London and the suburbs began to slow until, in February 1666, it was considered safe enough for the king and his entourage to come back to the city. With the return of the monarch, others began to return. The gentry returned in their carriages accompanied by carts piled high with their belongings. The judges moved back from Windsor to sit in Westminster Hall. Parliament, which had been prorogued in April 1665, did not reconvene until September 1666. Trade recommenced and businesses and workshops opened up. London was the goal of a new wave of people who flocked to the city expecting to make their fortunes. Writing at the end of March 1666, Lord Clarendon, the Lord Chancellor, stated, The streets were as full, the exchange as much crowded. The people in all places as numerous as they had ever been seen. As a proportion of the population who died, the London death toll was less severe than in some other towns. The total of deaths in London was greater than in any previous outbreak for 100 years, though as a proportion of the population, the epidemics in 1563, 1603, and 1625 were comparable or greater. Perhaps around 2.5% of the English population died. The plague in London largely affected the poor as the rich were able to leave the city by either retiring to their country estates or residing with kin in other parts of the country. The subsequent Great Fire of London ruined many city merchants and property owners. As a result of these events, London was largely rebuilt and Parliament enacted the Rebuilding of London Act 1666. The street plan of the capital remained relatively unchanged. Still, some improvements were made. Streets were widened, pavements were created, open sewers were abolished, wooden buildings and overhanging gables were forbidden, and the design and construction of buildings were controlled. Brick or stone was mandatory and many gracious buildings were constructed. Not only was the capital rejuvenated, but it became a healthier environment in which to live. Londoners had a greater sense of community after they had overcome the great adversities of 1665 and 1666. Thank you for watching till the end. Please consider encouraging us by subscribing to our channel. In order to show your support, don't forget to like and share the video.